founder with me, Michael Mujisa. Now, we are back in Kigali on this particular episode to track the conversations on how Africa is yet to build a bigger and stronger community of engineers. We are at the second Africa Engineering Conference here in Kigali, where much of the stakeholders are discussing conversations, effective waste management, a way to turn waste into resource, moving forward with creating more jobs for the populace. This is Doing Business in Rwanda. Sub-Saharan Africa has one of the world's fastest urbanization rates. Between 2010 and 2015, Africa was the second fastest urbanizing continent, second only to Asia. But fast urbanization with slow structural transformation is now proving to be a challenge. One of these challenges is waste management. Studies now show that waste could as well be turned into sustainable business. I think the waste to resource business concept is a very good business case because it's like an area that has not been explored. Uh, most African countries do not have waste management policy and uh, there has been a lot of waste gathering over the years and, and it's just like a free resource. And once this mindset change comes into effect in, the, in most African parts, and once we have enough education uh, to our population that waste uh, is only in the mind, waste is uh, an input into many processes, then I think over the years it can become a viable business. But having said that, it can only become a viable business if there is enough investment, not only by the private sector, but by governments in awareness and lobbying and in, in information dissemination as to the benefits of waste, which are like obviously it's the bottom line, you get a profit and a margin if you engage in waste waste management businesses. And also the climate change benefits environmental stewardship benefits uh, which are, cannot be measured in monetary terms. So it's basically a public and private good and as such there should be win-win scenarios in crafting uh, corporates in Africa that work for waste management and, and besides uh, a, a clean environment is next to godliness and, and, and it makes the whole environment and tourism many other factors that will benefit the public and governments. Some of them are just encouraging that and recommending that the producers of waste needs to pay for those wastes. But for us, we've already started it and we are some step far from them. What is being done now, I think everybody who lives here in Rwanda knows every domestic house, the, depending on the size of the waste, the big house produces more waste. The small house produces less waste and they pay proportionally to the waste they, pro, they give away. But still, they, that is about the, uh, the solid waste. But this solid waste is taken away to the site, dumping site, sorted, processed, and they make some, some of them make energy where they have the briquette. Some of them can make organic fertilizers. So this is what has been done. But still we say, we see that it is not enough. Yes. Because it is done in some urban areas, not even all urban areas. But if people changed their perspective and attitude towards this, it means they would create more opportunities for employment, mm -hmm. more opportunity for the youth, more opportunity for women. Because once you have mastered the processes, it does not require many other 
skills. Because you know when you have waste there's a lot of you know you can reuse the waste, you can recycle and in the process of doing that you're actually creating employment you know for many people recycling, they have to collect, they have to dispose of this this waste so that eventually you know you use it in another format. So for me I think that would create a lot of uh, you know em employment opportunities for most of the people in, in, in the country and in the cities and if we can extend it to the rural, rural um, you know areas it will even be more useful because you find there's, there's a lot of ways they don't know what to do with it and there are so many you know, uh, jobless young people that will also keep them, engage them, give them a source of income. And it's something that really uh, should be encouraged. And I think if the engineers that we had here this week get together, put their acts together and address that issue, then uh, the unemployment that uh, we find uh, is a problem in Africa will definitely also you know, go down. Many developing countries have made efforts towards mainstreaming sustainability in decisions on measures of policies, plans, and programs as prescribed in the Millennium Development Goals. However, there is a need for appropriate environmental information decision support systems to be knitted into city plans. Governments are trying to, to cope with it, how to, to reduce it, but now it is an alarming problem because the population is highly uh, growing and uh, the, some, some urban, urban cities have not been planned it is, and now the, to handle waste it is a big problem. Actually, while designing the civil structures, especially for buildings, you, we consider the number of users and you, this actually the waste from the toilets and the, and the water all are considered while designing. And you as, as the civil engineers uh, and now as we are we are developing the green growth economics. We have we have to handle. We, we provide the ways to handle those waste in the in the ways that those waste will not uh, will not be the problem for the green growth. Current demographics are constantly on an upward trend with the world's population. For urban centers, coupled with a high rural urban migration, this is causing a great strain on available water treatment facilities. There is some water purifier which you can use to treat water, that drinkable water, for, from municipal water, so that you can get water without uh, other without boiling or buying it from the supermarkets. We have some different equipment which is even affordable which you can get treated water. For the wastewater treatment, it's, a, it's, a, it's normally composed with uh, some chambers, if I can say so, or some steps it follows for water to be treated. Uh, primary step, if I can say so, it's just correcting that raw water or sewage water for stabilization the, in the stabilization chamber. On the second stage, that is where water is being um, aerated. There is aeration where you use uh, air blowers, pump, biodegradable stuff. That's where it's taking press. On the third, third step, there is, uh, if I can say, chlorination or do dosing that water. Yeah. And then you can use that water like in washing cars or, or in irrigation, yeah. We do wastewater treatment systems. So into the system goes wastewater, sewage, and out of the system comes treated wastewater in a quality which is suitable for reuse for irrigation. Traditionally, decentralized wastewater is not something you see in the mega cities. It's something you see in the in the urban areas. However, the trend we see now is a tide of capital. So in Africa in general, you see that 90% of the sewage is not treated and there is some sewage treatment in the mega cities, but not necessarily covering everything. So even with all the goodwill of 
with all the goodwill, how, if you are to treat all the sewage, how should it be done from a capital perspective? So what we offer with the decentral treatment is when a new house, a new commercial building, a new hotel is coming online, you can form legislation only on the new builds and then surely, surely but surely, over a period of time, you'll have effective wastewater treatment altogether. So I think there's a future for decentral wastewater treatment due to the investment profile um, house by house. I think the, the wastewater treatment of what we do is heavily depending on legislation. So um, in all, as for other environmental issues, this actually this will first happen when we got sort of real legislation to support us. What will happen in Rwanda right now is we'll see legislation for new builds of commercial buildings of hotels and for development of housing development, so those will be the key markets. Plastics are increasing at an alarming rate and are adversely affecting the environment as they are not easily degraded. Producers in Rwanda look at this as a resource using post-consumer plastic waste and produce alternative eco-friendly building products. Uh, this this pavies are, are also manufactured in plastic uh, garbage. You see, we see the, the bottles, water bottles. So we collect them, you see, and uh, we have a machine which can help and uh, produce uh, pavies from plastics and uh, and uh, sands. We have just uh, people who just want this pavies, and the uh, market is there, and we are ready to produce them, and. Uh, We'll go to keep going and uh, produce many of them, yeah. Uh, but now time, now time, uh, we produce like um, like uh, 1,000 pervis per day. We have enough garbage uh, that can produce those pervis, and uh, we are still collecting them. Uh, you see, we, we increase the number of people who just provide us the, the uh, can give us the, the garbage, and uh, we are st uh, still improve. The, the correction of this garbage. So according to the garbage that we produce, it, 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 there is no problem. According to the quantity of pervs that we are producing right now, there is no problem. So we think that uh, everything goes well. Solid waste collection and transportation in Kigali made it the cleanest city in Africa. This achievement is on the back of leadership and innovation in scheduling and routing for transportation of waste. However, there are some areas that need improvement to ensure sustainable waste management, like development in new technology. Number one, we do not work on 3G, we do not work on 4G. We work very simple on 2G connection and what we hope is we will find 2G everywhere. However, if there is a chance that we do not find 2G, even 2G in, in any, any remote areas of Africa, then we have another technologies like Sigfox, like LoRa technology. We will use them. They do not use any. They are just free uh, frequency bandwidths available across the world. So yes, we are ready for deploying such kind of systems without even any, any um, GPRS communication systems. We've been talking to many city of Kigali people out here and what they are facing is number one, payments. They're not able to collect payments from all the citizens of the city. Number one, which is the biggest payment. They don't know where, where, uh, where the payments are going, whether the payment has really been collected from citizens or not. Number one. Number two, we are ensuring that every bin, we are ensuring that every household, the, the, the vehicle which is supposed to pick up the garbage, reaches that place. We're ensuring that this is how we, we see a compatibility between the system and the city of Kigali to, to manage their solid waste problems efficiently and effectively. By using our systems, we, what we do is we uh, uh, install devices, GPS devices onto the trucks, the RFID reader onto the trucks, all the RFID tags on across the bin so that you can see the real-time picture, real-time status of all the bins across the city. Isn't that amazing? I mean, sitting at one command and control center, you can see everything, which bin is cleaned today by which vehicle, number one. Number two, how many bins are cleaned today, which all bins are not cleaned today. Or for that matter, we are not only uh, cleaning, making sure that the, the bins and the households are cleaned by these people, Oh, however, we are also managing the complaints by providing a mobile app to all the citizens of the city, by and they can log their complaints uh, uh, take for example if i am i am i am the citizen of a particular city i can log my complaint that my bin was scheduled to be 
cleaned at some xyz time and it is yet not cleaned so the 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 system will send that complaint directly to the command and control center which will further take over that and clean that and that's pretty much where we leave it for this episode of doing business in Rwanda we were here for a week long Africa engineering conference 2017 that was looking at the youth the government and the private sector's involvement in conversations effective waste management that's where we leave it for this episode and if you have any feedback be sure to send us an email at dbir at abn 360 or tweet us at DBI Rwanda. For more episodes on doing business in Rwanda or other market matters, be sure to go to www.cnbcafrica.com. Now from the entire doing business in Rwanda team, thank you very much for watching.